Welcome to Norwich Northworth Methodist Churches with Reverend Mary Sachikonye. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hand. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they display their knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has pitched a tent for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming forth from his pavilion, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul, The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heavens. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are sure and altogether righteous. They are more precious than gold, more pure than gold. They are sweeter than honey, the honey that comes from the curl. Amen.
open prayer we meet as family in the presence of our heavenly father we meet as brothers and sisters in christ accepting the responsibility this places upon us and that is to love one another as you have loved us dear god we meet as your light in this dark world and pray that through our words our actions and our lives others might be drawn into your family and accept you as their personal savior and lord amen our reading comes from ephesians 2 verses 18 to 22 for through him we both have access to the father by one spirit consequently you are no longer foreigners and strangers but fellow citizens with god's people and also members of his household built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with christ jesus himself as the chief cornerstone in him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the lord and in him you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which god lives by his spirit the bible reading is john 2 verses chapter 12 through to verse 22. after this jesus and his mother brothers and disciples went to capernaum and stayed there a few days it was almost time for the passover festival so jesus went to jerusalem there in the temple he found people selling cattle sheep and pigeons and also the money changers sitting at their tables so he made a whip from cords and drove all the animals out of the temple both the sheep and the cattle he overturned the tables of the money changers and scattered their coins and he ordered those who sold the pigeons take them out of here stop making my father's house a marketplace his disciples remembered that the scripture says my devotion to your house O god burns in me like a fire the jewish authorities replied with a question what miracle can you perform to show us that you have the right to do this? Jesus answered, Tear down this temple, and in three days I will build it again. Are you going to build it again in three days? They asked him. It has taken 46 years to build this temple. But the temple Jesus was speaking about was his body. So when he was raised from death, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and what Jesus had said. Amen. It was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration, so Jesus went to Jerusalem. In the temple area, he saw merchants selling cattle, sheep and doves for sacrifices. He also saw dealers at tables exchanging foreign money. Jesus made a whip from some ropes and chased them all out of the temple. He drove out the sheep and cattle, scattered the money changers, coins over the floor and turned over their tables. Then, going over to the people who sold doves, he told them, Get these things out of here! Stop turning my father's house into a marketplace! But the Jewish leaders demanded, What are you doing? If God gave you authority to do this, show us a miraculous sign to prove it! All right, Jesus replied. Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. What, they exclaimed, it has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you can rebuild it in three days. 
But when Jesus said in this temple, he meant his own body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered he had said this, and they believed both the scriptures and what Jesus had said. Thank you for watching our sermon. The church is now in the season of Lent. Lent means springtime and lasts for six weeks, from Ash Wednesday until Easter. And nature shows itself during Lent in new life. Snowdrops, crocuses, daffodils and tulips all follow in order. My story today is called A Surprise for Lent. There was an old school in a village in Wales with a playground at the back and a lawn at the front. And Mr Davis, a Welshman, was the caretaker. He'd been the caretaker for 30 years and his own children had grown up and gone to live in Australia. As Mr and Mrs Davis were getting older, they decided that they wanted to leave England and go to live near their families in Australia. And so, on the last day of the summer term, they had a special assembly to say goodbye to Mr and Mrs Davis and they were presented with a clock and some flowers and cards. Mr Davis thanked everyone very much and he said that he would be leaving soon and was giving a present to the school before he left. But they would have to wait until Lent, that's eight months away, before they would know what it was. A few weeks later, a lorry arrived at the school before Mr and Mrs Davis left and delivered three sackfuls of things that looked like onions. After school, on several days, Mr Davis would be back at the school on the lawn with a sack beside him. He seemed to be tidying up the grass. A new caretaker started work at the school and Mr and Mrs Davis went to Australia and the children seemed to forget all about the promise. The months passed and one day in assembly the head teacher said to the children, Look, Mr Davis's present has arrived. It's on the front lawn. I think you'll like it. We'll all go out and have a look. And when they went, they saw lots and lots and lots of lovely yellow daffodils. Those things that had arrived by the lorry in sacks were not onions, but daffodil bulbs, and Mr Davies had planted them before he went to Australia. They all realised why they had to wait so long to see the present from Mr Davies. The head teacher said they would come up every year to remind everybody about Mr and Mrs Davies. The children thought Lent was a good time to receive a present like that after the dark, dull days of winter. And they also understood that Lent was another word for springtime. And they wrote thank you letters and sent photographs and cards to tell Mr. and Mrs. Davis about their surprise for Lent. And let us pray. Thank you, God, for the gift of new life. Thank you for crocuses and daffodils. Thank you for every hedge, bush and tree whose green leaves are beginning to appear now. Thank you for Lent and springtime. We are grateful for the joys of nature, 
for the songs of birds and nesting time. Amen. Thank you for listening. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you, Bethany. Thank you, Nicole. You girls, you're amazing. Thank you so much. You are wonderful. Thank you. That was beautiful. What a sermon. Wow. Thank you, girls. And thank you, Viv. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for being present in this service today. Uh, today, we are having... Uh, Alan is going to preach for us. Uh, after Keith uh, playing the next hymn I danced in the morning, uh, Alan is going to bless us with a message. Over to you, Keith. The first record in our Bibles of a man setting aside a special place where he could feel close to God happens when Noah has emptied the ark of the animals. In Genesis chapter 8 verse 20 we read, Noah built an altar to the Lord. The altars became a place of worship, a place to say thank you, a place to show remorse and your need for God's forgiveness and doing this by offering sacrifices. Wanting to be right by God, but never achieving it. So sacrifice followed sacrifice over many different years, down the centuries. We must always be thankful that God, because of his love for us, has a desire to be near his people, and them to be near to him. In Exodus 25 verse 9, God tells Moses, then have them made a sanctuary for me, and I will dwell with them. During their wanderings, God's dwelling place with Israel was a sacred tent, 
But when the Israelites settled in the promised land, there arose a strong desire to have no more tents, but to have houses. A weekend camping is fun, but 40 years, no wonder they thought about having permanent homes for themselves. And if for themselves, why not also for God? We are told that King David wanted to build it, but Solomon was the one who carried out the heavy task. They wanted a house fit for God. That was the plan, and no money, time or effort was spared in making it come true. It became the focus of Jewish worship, and Jerusalem their most important and religious city. But things went wrong. The Israelites were defeated by foreign powers. Jesus, Jer Jerusalem was sacked and the temple destroyed. During their exile in strange lands, a desire to worship the one God together in a supportive fellowship gave rise to the synagogue, a place of worship but not of sacrifice, a place to observe the great festivals of the faith. But then, as now, it was the wish of every Jew to celebrate Passover in Jerusalem. Next year in Jerusalem became a Jewish greeting. After their return from exile, a settled second temple was built, but this also was destroyed, to be later replaced by the Herodian temple, the one which Jesus knew. That potted history brings us to today's reading from John's Gospel and the, revival, the arrival of Jesus at the temple in Jerusalem. We remember that he was first taken there as a babe in arms, and on his second visit worried his mother and father by getting lost there for three days. Today's Gospel lesson shows us Jesus coming, to the, coming as the cleanser of the temple. Angry at what he found there, the court of the Gentiles, the outermost court of the temple complex, the only place where non-Jews could gather and worship, was so crowded by dishonest traders that they were present, prevented from doing so. When, a, when he was asked for a miraculous sign to prove his authority for doing what he did, he answered, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. In a way we have arrived at the end of the path that led men first to build altars to be close to God, then a tabernacle for his presence to travel with them, and finally the Jewish temple as its permanent home among them. In Jesus, God came and lived with his people, not in a man-made structure, but as a God become man. Through Jesus' life, death and resurrection, all people, including you and me, have been given the invitation to become part of a new living temple, built of living body of people, people who accept Jesus as foundation, capstone, cement, designer, and above all, occupier. When Jesus was crucified, the first part of our text was fulfilled, destroyed his temple. For their definition of the temple was a building where God had chosen to live with them. What they failed to understand was that Jesus was God, a God who had come and lived among them, and he would be killed. At the moment of his death, the great curtain in the temple, which separated off the Holy of Holies, was torn apart. While God had never been separated from his people, the tearing of the curtain symbolized that any man-made separation of people from God had been removed. It stands as a reminder that any man, woman or child who wants to be united with him through faith in Jesus can be so. Paul writes into the church at Ephesus, Ephesus 2, 19 to 22, tells us, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners or aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you too are being built together to become a dwelling 
in which God lives by his Spirit. Note the stresses in that passage. No longer foreigners or aliens, but fellow citizens. Any distinctions based on colour, class, education, financial status, titles or ranks are all null and void, of no value to God, and they should be of no value to us as well. For we are all members of God's temple household. It is solely up to God to employ us as he chooses, to equip us as he wishes, and to rank us as he pleases. And we do well to remember what God taught about the rank of a servant. When asked for a, for a miraculous sign to prove his authority for cleansing the temple, Jesus answered, Destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. Jesus' resurrection is fundamental element of our faith. He is a loving foundation, the living foundation, on which we can build our lives, body and soul. Knowing in our hearts that to build on this foundation is to build securely on a rock that cannot be moved. We began with a pile of rocks, moved to a tent of canvas, onto a magnificent, magnificent building of decorated stone and wood. But now we have arrived at the living reality, that is the risen Jesus Christ himself. We have also travelled from the first book of the Bible, and now we close with words from the last, as we read of the new Jerusalem, in Revelations 21 verse 2. I did not see a temple in the city, because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. We pray that the Holy Spirit will strengthen our belief that we meet and live as members of the living holy temple, which is Christ himself. Amen. Thank you, Alan. Thank you so much for a profound message, a word in season, especially the, this time of Lent, as we walk in solidarity with our Lord Jesus Christ, who was suffering for us. May God bless you, bless you abundantly, now and always. Thank you. It is time we continue to remind each other about free will of a tree. Uh, the message is not to pressurize anyone. We know things have been difficult and things continue to be difficult for people. And we pray that uh, as we are seeing light at the end of the tunnel, things will get better. But as we look forward to meeting again, we are going to hope to open our churches and to continue and we need whatever input be it prayers be it money be it anything so when we give we are giving whatever we can so we hope all who feel able to give may continue to give and those who pray who can pray may continue to pray uh, today mary is going to give us our offertory prayer over to you mary let us pray. Help us to be generous givers, dear Lord, both with our money and our lives, that we might make a difference to our city. We ask this through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who gave all that we might know life in all its fullness. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father, as we start our prayers of intercession, we ask for your tender mercy for things we should not have said or done. We ask for forgiveness if our thoughts, words and deeds may have hurt others, especially those who are close to us. In many households, because there is no freedom or space because of lockdown, there is often tension and anger and even violence. We pray that help is sought and action taken to stop domestic violence which is on the increase, and that organised mediation and separation can diffuse the situation and avoid injury. Loving Lord, as COVID regulations are going to be slowly relaxed, we pray for all our teachers and children as they return to school in March. 
we are aware that many children's education and social skills have deteriorated and we ask that once school starts their confidence may return, that some form of formality may return. We especially think of the older pupils who face an uphill struggle with confidence regarding their GCSE and their A-level studies and that their teachers can assess ability in a fair way which is equal for all and that they will not be deprived and known as the COVID generation. We give thanks for those who have gone that extra mile in volunteering in food banks, delivery services and vaccination centres without whose help the situation could be far worse. We ask that the vaccination supply situation will be improved in Norwich and suburbs through news media coverage and political pressure so that these areas can catch up with the national average uptake. Lord, we pray that you help put an end to the shedding of innocent blood and destruction in Yemen where children seem to be legitimate targets. And we also pray for Myanmar, formerly known as Burma, where democracy has been toppled by the army. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all, govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin to be the subject of his just and gentle rule. And finally, Almighty God, you have promised to hear the prayers of those who ask in your Son's name. We pray that what we have asked faithfully, we may obtain effectually through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us say together the prayer that the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Thank you for watching our service channel today and joining us in fellowship. Please feel free to share, like, or subscribe. And please do note that it's free to subscribe. Thank you.